But I found it on a Pakistan newspaper, an English-speaking Pakistan newspaper, about two weeks ago, that a member of the Pakistan government was calling for Obama to be recognized as the global leader of all of Islam. Yes. Yes, I'm going to I'm going to talk about that in in a future blog, perhaps on Thursday. That that indeed happened. I mean, <laughs> folks, it's coming down and it's coming down fast and hard. Okay, well, uh, I mean, who is this guy? I, <laughs> I don't know the details yet. All that I, I probably read the same thing that you did. Um, but I mean, Obama. Who is he? Oh, who, who is this man? I mean. It, well, I mean, why would Muslims, if he's not a Muslim, why are the Muslims talking about making him their ruler? Uh, exactly. Exactly. And I, is, has he practiced some hudabaya on the American people? Oh, big time. I mean, he, I have never seen anybody who can just face the cameras and just come out with these bold-faced lies with such arrogance that it is indeed, I'm not saying he's the Antichrist, I'm saying he is, like, like you have said, this, he represents the spirit of the Antichrist. And he, from the things that I have read, he is much more, he has been groomed for this position for a very long time by people that we don't even know because it's, you know, uh, Conspiracy theorists really, you know, they're really into this. Those who are not have trouble believing it about, you know, the Illuminati and the One World Order. And um, I deal with this in the book also because when I started getting into this and the things that I discovered absolutely shocked me. I had no idea that this really existed. But I'm not saying that this is, in fact, what's happening, but I, I'm laying out some of the possibilities and all I can say for sure is there is a lot going on behind the scenes that we don't understand and that Christians have got to get their act together and get it together quickly. People ask me, you know, what, what should we be doing? This is a new thing here. You know, we've never encountered anything like this. What kind of strategy do we need? And my answer is simply... We don't need any new strategy. The church needs to finally start acting like the church when the church is doing what it's been called to do and starts um, representing Christ you know, in the way that we've been supposed to. That's right. Hey, we're, we're in People start learning what their spiritual gifts are and acting, uh, and, and acting out their spiritual gifts for the benefit of the body then things are going to change. That's right. Wearing tea bags on your baseball cap and going to a Glenn Beck rally isn't going to change our situation. The church needs to be the church. That's, That's what we need. And we don't need to be following a Mormon in a political crusade. The church needs to speak for Jesus Christ with a clear voice. Um. You know, Avi Lipkin has been on the program, and he's got an interesting theory, and it really makes sense. Uh, Avi says so, um, Obama is a Sunni Muslim, and because his father was a Sunni Muslim, and his uh, spiritual mentor is uh, the king of Saudi Arabia. That's why he bowed down and kissed him, kissed his hand. Um, Interesting point. Yeah, if, if indeed that is true, and hard to prove it, but it's... Uh, hey, the title, the title of this, the, what this Pakistan leader, uh, what was his name? Um, I just pulled up the, the uh, World Net Daily article. It was written by Aaron Klein. Uh, a Pakistani newspaper is quoting one of the country's ministers as stating that he wants Barack Obama to offer Muslim prayers at Ground Zero and become the caliph, 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 or ruler of the Islamic nations, like the Pope of Islam. Um, the guy's name, uh, uh, this was uh, Ayatollah, Ayatollah Durrani, according to Pakistan's The Nation newspaper. He said the coming, uh, what is it? 
Eid, Eid. What is that holiday? How is it pronounced? E I D. E I D. All right. Out yeah, you know what we're talking right. about. The coming holiday would reportedly, expectedly be observed on 9/11. This is a golden opportunity for Barack Obama to offer prayers at Ground Zero and become Amir ul Momineen, or Caleb of Muslims. In this way, all the problems of the Muslim world would be solved. Oh, yeah. Let, what are we, we talking did. about here, Mullah Obama? Yeah. Um, if I can shed a little bit light a light on that too. Um, not sure how much time we have. Oh, here, keep going. This here. Go ahead. The uh, we need to understand who the Muslim Brotherhood is because this this all ties ties in with that and and the the caliphs and the caliphate. The caliph is is like as you said the world leader of of Muslims. And that came to an end in 1924, uh, with the end of the Ottoman Empire. That uh, that was considered as a very black day in the Islamic world because now they had no world leaders. The Muslim Brotherhood was an organization that started in Egypt in Cairo after the uh, dismantling of the Caliphate in order to reestablish it someday. So their whole, uh, the basis of their whole operation are to reestablish that, to have one, one Islamic leader of the entire world. And when that person is identified and the Muslim world feels as though now they have a caliph again, then all this stuff about moderate Muslims, you know, forget about it. Because Muslims are then, that person has the power to declare worldwide jihad. And every Muslim is required to submit to that. And so that's what, what the Muslim Brotherhood is, is up to. They are apparently also trying, I think they are well tied in with these uh, efforts to put Barack Obama in these higher positions so so when he leaves the white house is he going to assume is he going to come out of the closet and declare that he is a muslim and then be elevated to this position boy i i don't know i think that's i think that's all going to be by stealth also Mm -hmm. because it's working so well for him now Mm -hmm. that so few people are believing that i think um he may have had intentions of, you know, of being a one-term president, knowing that... Uh, because he's going to be a two-term... Ge- maybe because he's going to be a two-term United Nations General Secretary? Well, yeah, he's like we said, he's got uh, bigger plans than president. Um, this guy's scary. Oh, we have no idea. Ed, on, on Election Eve 2008, uh, when I went to bed and I prayed and I said, Father... You don't have to tell me, but I'm going to ask who is going to win this election tomorrow. And every scripture I turned to didn't matter. Every time I opened my Bible and looked down, it was a scripture about Antichrist. I finally just said, I'd rather not continue this conversation. I'm just going to go to sleep. And in the morning on election day, I'm still in bed. And I, I said, Father, I'm going to ask again. Who will be in the White House when this day's over? And I reached over to my nightstand, my Bible was there, and I just opened it up and looked, and, and it was a scripture about Antichrist. Oh, wow. And I went, okay, this is not looking good. This is definitely not looking good. We've, I, got, we've I, got something we very believers. evil in the White House right now. Mm-hmm. I, I am convinced that God has placed us here at this point in time for a reason. We, you know, it's so easy to throw up our hands and, and say, oh my gosh, what, you know, what are we going to do? Woe is us. The end is near. Well, he could have placed us here on earth at any point in history, but he chose to put us here right now for, at this point in time for a reason.